man. This is, you know what? Honestly, if I, off the top of my head, if I had $10,000, I kind of would want to Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be another Hermes questions and answers. I always seem to have plenty of them, so we're gonna continue on with this series. Firstly, if you are new to my channel and you aren't already subscribed, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button below and also the bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos, which is twice a week on a Wednesday and on a weekend. Okay, so starting off with the first question. The first question I have is, how do I feel about Hermes fine jewelry? Okay. Now, Hermes Fine Jewelry, I only have one piece and it is my uh, Collier Dishen Silver Rock Ring. But yeah, at the time I'm filming this, I only have this piece. Now, how do I feel about Hermes Fine Jewelry? Just gonna be completely and totally honest. I think that fine jewelry from any luxury brand is an absolute ripoff, but same can be said when it comes to handbags as well, okay? so. When you're thinking about, like, say, buying gold jewelry from a jeweler that custom makes jewelry, um, that kind of thing, it is always going to be cheaper than buying from a luxury fashion house. Luxury fashion houses inflate the price purely because of the brand. You know, you're getting fine jewelry from a brand. So I just want to get that out of the way. Is that that's just a very logical thing? I think most people sort of know that. But with that aside because we know that we are paying an inflated price and the same thing for handbags as well anything luxury you're paying you're paying that luxury price tag however when it comes to Hermes fine jewelry i actually do like it i actually think that the Hermes fine jewelry compared to say like van cleef and arpels can be pretty reasonable um some pieces can be more expensive, some pieces can be quite competitive same said for like cartier some of the cartier pieces are much more expensive than Hermes and then some of the Hermes pieces might be more expensive than Cartier. Uh, so yeah, there are some pieces that are comparable in price, some pieces that seem to be more like Hermes seems to be more like, for example, the uh, Hermes Kelly bracelet that is very, very expensive. The Hermes Collier de Chen bracelet, solid gold, is also again quite expensive but not as expensive as a Kelly bracelet. So then in those situations, the Cartier Love Bracelet, which is a solid bracelet as well with like hall marking on it, ends up being better value compared to like the Kelly Bracelet and the Collier de Chen. However, the Kelly Bracelet has a lot of detail to it with that lock. Um, the Collier de Chen also the same sort of thing. So that's something you have to take into mind, into, into mind as well. But I do think that Hermes Fine Jewelry is really quite nice. I'm noticing that they have more rose gold than they have yellow gold now. They seem to be phasing out yellow gold. If you're okay with silver, that's technically fine jewelry, but it's just not... It's not exactly a, the, the kind of fine jewellery that they really want you to be buying. The only downfall that I would say with Hermes Fine Jewellery is that if you buy it, plan to keep it. Don't be buying it and thinking, oh, there's a chance I'm going to... If, if you're thinking you might be wanting to sell it later on, well, you never know your financial circumstances. You might have to. But really, the problem is, is that if you do need to sell your Hermes Fine Jewellery, you'll find that it does not hold its value. It is pretty much the absolute worst when it comes to holding its value compared to, say, Cartier and VCA. Uh, Van Cleef and Arpels and Cartier, if you buy their fine jewellery, which is which is what they sell, okay, um, it does tend to hold its value much better. Like, you might only lose about 10% of the price, 20% at the very most. However... With Hermes Fine Jewelry, you could be losing up to 60% of the price. I have seen um, even the Collier de Chen bracelet with like um, uh, diamonds on it sell for like more than 60% off. So I think I've answered that question in terms of Hermes Fine Jewelry. Um, I have another question that's related to fine jewelry, and that is what do I think of Van Cleef and Arpels Cartier or Bulgari Fine Jewelry, or do I think it's better to invest in Hermes Fine Jewelry? And I think that this really going is going to come down to if you are wanting to get a bag from the store, an Hermes bag, then I would say just go down the Hermes fine jewelry route. Um, if you really love Hermes and you don't really like VCA or Cartier, then again, I would say go Hermes fine jewelry. However, if you're looking for jewelry that you potentially think you might want to sell down the road, you're not sure if you're going to want to keep it forever, then 
VCA and Cartier are much better investments. They don't lose as much money in the resale market, like I was just saying before. So I think you just need to factor all those things into consideration, what you really, you know, what your end goal is gonna be, what you think you're gonna be doing with this jewelry. Uh, the next question I have is, what leather is best for a Birkin to hold shape? And do I suggest, what do I suggest for a Birkin 30 or a Birkin 25? So if you're actually wanting um, your Birkin to hold shape for a, like forever, um, Epsom is the best for really holding shape. However, I don't think that Epsom really looks nice in a Birkin. I think that um, because the Birkin is designed to be more relaxed, that it actually suits better to be in a more softer leather. And the Birkin, in, is actually in the Retorn shape. So again, it makes more sense for it to be in a softer leather. If you're going for a Birkin Celia, then that's a completely different thing. We're only gonna focus on the classic style of Birkin. So if you're wanting it to hold shape, I would personally say the best thing that you can do is go ahead and just get the Seven Rue Paradise insert. If you get this, if you buy a brand new Birkin and you use this from the get-go, you will pretty much be able to avoid your bag slouching. Even with Clemence leather, you could pretty much avoid it. So for me, I had the Birkin for about a year and then I got this after about a year. And in the year that I wasn't using the Seven Rue Paradise insert, I did find that my Birkin started to slouch. So if you notice here, it's kind of got a bit of a bulge here. That happened because I think what happened was that I was using one of those big bag puff pillows to hold the shape of the bag and that pushed out the leather. Also, I was using a different insert before, back, you know, when I first got the bag and it had a board on the bottom of the insert and I feel that also helped, like, it also pushed out the leather so it kind of damaged the leather in a way, even though it's not a bad thing or anything, it doesn't look bad, but I know that that's what had happened to it. And then, in January of this year, I got the Seven Rue Paradise insert. Um, they kindly gifted it to me, and I, ever since, I would never, ever go back. There was no other in insert that I would use other than the Seven Rue Paradise inserts. And since using it for the full year, it has made such a difference in regards to, like, the shape of the bag. It is, um, hasn't slouched anymore, so the slouching has stopped. It hasn't gotten any worse. That's the main thing. But obviously, once it's already started to happen, then you can't, Pretty, you pretty much can't reverse that, but you can stop it from continuing to happen. So that's the main point here. If you do go ahead and get an insert from the get-go, you will find that the bag will hold its shape pretty much irregardless of whatever what leather you, that you get. Uh, you know, if you're familiar with my channel, that I do have the coupon codes of Seven Rue Paradise for the 30 euro off. Uh, one insert, which is POF 30, and then uh, POF 70 gets you 70 euro off if you need two inserts. But the thing I'll also say is that even if you go with a Birkin 25, um, even it being a smaller bag, I'm gonna use this bag as an example, my Kelly 25. Again, I've been using the insert inside about pretty much a year and a half from when I got the bag, I, I put the insert inside and it has really helped to retain the shape of my Kelly 25. I have seen Kelly 25s in the pre-love market that look like absolute crap, two and a half years old and they look like they're slouching, losing shape, but this has really retained its shape. And again, I think it's because of the insert. So I would just say, don't worry too much about trying to pick the leather to hold the shape because if you get the insert from the get-go, then it'll hold its shape anyway. The only problem will be is if you're buying pre-loved. That's when you're going to find that you might find bags that already have structure loss. And yes, you can put the insert in and that will really help. It'll slow down the further structure loss. It'll help to improve the shape, but you can't reverse the damage. Once leather is stretched out, and started to be molded, it is pretty hard to reverse that damage. And that's why I say get the insert from the very get-go if you do get a brand new bag. Okay, so I was asked, does the iPhone Max fit into a Mini Kelly? And I don't have a Mini Kelly. I don't really feel like there's any bag that I can kind of use it as an example. So um, I do follow someone on Instagram called I'm, I'm Blue E, and she does have a Mini Kelly. And I know before, Back in like 2018, she did a post where she showed the iPhone 8 Plus. Um, when you put that inside the uh, Mini Kelly, it's not exactly a great fit. It does fit, but it has to be diagonal. On her post, the iPhone X fits really well in the Mini Kelly, um, but the iPhone Plus, like say whatever, I, I'm not an iPhone user. I'm not a fan of Apple, so that's why I don't really know all this terminology. But the iPhone 8 Plus, 
back when she had it in June 2018. It was too big inside the Mini Kelly. The next question I have is, what do you think about the Evelyn PM in Clemence leather? So I've never owned an Evelyn PM, but I did own an Evelyn TPM in Clemence leather. Um, I would think that... In the Evelyn PM and even the TPM, because the Evelyn is designed to be a casual crossbody bag that hugs to your body, I think that Clemence leather is completely fine for either of those bags, for any size of the Evelyn in fact. There are some other options, I think that you can also get Epsom as well. And the thing with Epsom on um, the Evelyn is that it's only single lined, so the Epsom leather actually isn't very structured as what it is on say like a Birkin or a Kelly where it is double lined. So that's kind of the good thing as well. But you will get a little bit more structure than what you would with Clemence with an Epsom Evelyn. But I think that the, the Clemence leather is probably the better option or even maybe like Maurice if you can get Maurice leather. That's a newer leather. It's a little bit, um, it's similar to Clemence but it's a little bit firmer, holds its shape a little bit better. But again, it is such a casual crossbody bag that hugs to your body. So I think that yeah, Clemence is fine. I think that whatever Hermes makes for the Evelyn normal Evelyn, not the Evelyn Cellier, but the standard Evelyn. I think you just have to trust in their craftsmanship. They tend to make their bags in leathers that they feel are favorable for the design of the bag. That's what's great about Hermes is that they they're smart. They know what leathers tend to work with what bags. So they tend to make those kind of bags to ensure that the buyers, like the consumers, are getting products that they're quite satisfied with all around, you know. Uh, I actually do have a question about Maurice leather. So they ask, uh, do I know about Maurice leather? Um, and I think the grains on this leather are smaller than they, what they are in Clemence. And yeah, you are actually uh, right. They are actually a bit smaller. The Maurice grain, the Maurice leather grains are smaller than what they are in Clemence. So I actually quite like Maurice leather. I think it looks quite nice. Um, I also do know that the structure does hold a bit better on Maurice. So Clemence is known to slouch quite quickly. It's a heavier leather, so it does give slouch pretty, pretty quick and does get floppy. Um, whereas Maurice does hold its shape better. The grains are smaller, which that smaller, tighter grain does help with structure overall. I don't know a lot about Maurice, but I still think it's still going to be very comparable to say Clemence. I think it's probably more of a hybrid between Clemence and Togo. Uh, Maurice leather is actually more expensive though. That's something to note that I noticed that the Maurice leather is about a hundred Australian dollars more expensive in the Evelyn. I also have a question about my bolid. So, um, I'm surprised with your choice of Epsom for your Bleed 27 because you say it's not scratch resistant. I have six Bastias in Epsom leather and they are all intact. Now, Epsom, yes, in Bastias, let me just address that part. In SLGs, I actually really like Epsom and I have said this before. I think that in SLGs, Epsom is fantastic and that is due to the fact that Epsom in SLGs is actually single lined. If you look at this, it is actually a single piece of leather. Like it's not um, double lined, it doesn't have structure support with additional lined leather. So I find that Epsom is softer, it actually feels softer in SLGs, which means that it doesn't scratch as easily. So in very structured bags, even so like the Bleed and the Kelly Cellier, Epsom and the Constance, I find that Epsom does scratch easy on structured bags because structured bags, and these kind of bags, the Bleed, the Kelly, and the Constance are double lined. The Bleed, however, is double lined, but just not, it doesn't have what they call stays inside the bag. At least I don't feel as though it does, because it doesn't feel like it's heavy or anything. Like it feels like a very lightweight bag, so it doesn't feel as though it would have stays. I, It just wouldn't make any sense that it would. But it does have another lining inside, so it does have swift lining. And this is just naturally a very structured bag anyway in its design. This is a light color. Scratches don't show so easily on light colors. I find that on like medium tone colors with Epsom, um, that's when the scratches kind of show because it can bring up that white underneath the leather. In a nutshell, yes, Epsom can scratch. It can scratch easily if you have natural, natural nails, um, especially in structured bags. It does happen, but in Bastia's, Calvi's, I don't have any issues with Epsom getting scratched. Um, my preference with Epsom is for light colors because of the fact that I feel like it does kind of scratch easily with my natural nails. But that being said, that doesn't mean that I don't ever want to buy an Epsom bag. I'm not like that. Like, I feel as though... Hermes bags are meant to be used and loved and there is the Hermes spa for that very reason that you can kind of touch bags up. 
Downfall with Epsom is that it's probably the only leather that doesn't look the best when you spar it. It never comes out kind of looking new, unfortunately, whereas a lot of the other leathers can really come out looking great after a spar. But still, <laughs> it's more so just a, something to consider, like when you are choosing leathers and stuff like that, that my experience might not exactly be the same for you, but in my experience, that's just what, hap was ha what has happened with me, is that I've had Epsom bags and they have unfortunately scratched. So my preference is more so to go with the light colors on Epsom. But I wouldn't knock back an Epsom bag if it was in the specs that I wanted, the color I wanted. Like I want a Kelly Cellier. Okay, next question is, if I spend in small plates, change trays, cups or pillows and throws, is it the same as if someone spends buying Twillies, SLGs, or shoes? Short answer is no, it is not the same. Um, if you are buying in the homewares categories, which is plates, cups, trays, pillows, and throws, that's homewares, that is considered to be like a top tier category, very desirable with the sales associate and with the store. Um, homewares is definitely one of those places where you can really prove your loyalty and love for the brand. Uh, Twillies and SLGs, I would say probably out of those two, the lower category would be SLGs, small leather goods. Uh, Twillies is okay, it's in silks. I'd say it's probably in the medium, medium category. And shoes is also the same. It's in that medium kind of category. If that doesn't mean that your spend on SLGs doesn't count. Yes, it does. It's just that it's not as desirable when it comes to proving uh, your love and loyalty for the brand because small leather goods are typically quite easier for the house to sell. They have no problems with selling handbags, we know that. Um, they have no problems with selling Bastias and Calvies and Rodeos and that sort of thing. And maybe the word problem is not the right word to say, but they have a high demand and a high turnover for the sales in that. Whereas people that really love Hermes, they, that really have loyalty to the house, um, that representation is shown when you go and shop in, say, homewares, um, ready to wear and find jewelry because they don't have a high demand and a high turnover of sales in those categories. They don't have walking customers typically wanting to shop homewares and ready to wear and find jewelry, but they do have a ton of walk-in customers that want to shop their leather goods. And they'll have some customers that want to shop their silks, like their twillies and their scarves, because Hermes are well known for their scarves and their silks. Um, so but silks are still in that medium kind of category because they are still, compared to leather goods, they're just not as bought as much as leather goods are. But that's like the same with any luxury fashion house. Louis Vuitton, Chanel are all the same. They get a high turnover of their small leather goods, their bags, and that sort of thing versus those other top tier categories that I spoke about. Uh, next question is, if I had 10,000 Australian dollars to spend on ready to wear, fine jewelry and homewares, what would I get? I would have to really think hard about this question to really give a really solid answer. You know what? Honestly, if I, off the top of my head, if I had $10,000, I kind of would want to buy um, the Hermes HD Anchor bracelet. Um, I really like that bracelet. That's $8,700 Australian. So that pretty much takes a whole chunk of that $10,000 right then and there. But that's just me being honest. I really want to get that bracelet, but it's just not the time not the time right now for me to get it. And then with the remaining amount, I've only got like $1,300 left. Um, I would pretty much have to choose between then ready to wear or homewares. Like uh, the Avalon pillow, that's $870. And then I'll have like $300 left. And then I could probably get maybe the sushi tray. So those could be my, those could kind of be my options. But um, if I wanted to kind of really spread it out across the categories, then maybe um, an Avalon pillow, the Avalon blanket, I think that takes you to around about like say three and a half thousand dollars. Um, I would get the uh, ready to wear cardigan. It's like a silk, silk cardigan and then it's knitted on the sleeves or sometimes it kind of varies a little bit in design, but I would get that and that's about 2700 if I'm not mistaken. I really like that design. So that brings me to around about almost $6,000. Um, and then I probably would then maybe get, say, the, um, the re like a ring or something, like the Kelly ring, maybe the very small model that's like 2600 $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, yeah, it is really hard to kind of answer this question, but those are the kind of things. My okay, next question is, what do you think would classify a VIP spend in the Sydney store in Australia? Also, what would that include spend on Birkin, Kelly or Constance? Um, 
Firstly, I can tell you definitely now that any spend on your Birkin, the Kelly or the Constance does not count towards like your overall spend at that when you get offered that bag and you, you know, manage to what we say score the bag, um, even though, yes, it does cost money, of course, but it just doesn't count towards what is your total spend with the store with the store if you are chasing like a VIP sort of status. VIP status you would need to spend, I would say, around about $100,000 per year. And that would need to be mainly on homewares, fine jewelry, ready to wear, perhaps some silks and some shoes. Not really, no bags, that wouldn't count any bags, and hardly any leather goods. So you'd really have to stay in those, those top tier or medium tier categories. So hopefully that kind of answers the question. I'm not 100% sure if that's right. I do know of someone who spent like $110,000 in the year and I don't even think she really got considered a VIP and that wasn't counting bags. She bought mostly like fine jewelry and stuff like that. Um, but she ended up getting three bags. Like she got a Constance, a Birkin and a Kelly pochette in that year. So that was pretty good for her, but I still don't even think she got considered to be like a VIP or anything. So you know, who knows? So I've just got a few more questions left and then I'm going to wrap this up. So the next question is, have you ever owned anything in Pew, Pew de Pork? My sales associate just sent me a photo of a Calvi in it. Um, my answer to that is no, I wish that I have um, or wish that I had or have because it is actually a very rare leather and it was discontinued. Um, but then I seen it that they had it on the runway. Um, I think it was back in like autumn, might have been autumn winter in 2018 or might have been, it was something like that. It was, it was back a while ago. Uh, and I seen like a Kelly in Pew Pork, but then nothing came about from it. Like you never, end, I never ended up seeing a Pew Pork bag. But then recently I have seen that they've introduced Pew Pork in some, like some pieces. So I have seen it like in the SLGs. I even seen that there was a Birkin in Pew Pork. And I think that might've been from the autumn, winter 18, or it might've been autumn, winter or spring, summer 18 runway when I seen that they kind of, brought back Pew Pork as a push offer, but it is still a very extremely rare leather. And prior to when I had seen it back on the runway in um, 2018, it hadn't been around for so long, probably like about 15 years or something like that. Now it's popping up in some small items, but I don't think you're really gonna see it in bags. It would be totally and completely rare if it came about in bags. Um, as for the actual leather itself, as far as I know, it is very vulnerable to water stains. And from what I can see, it still looks like it's the same. Like if you get this wet, it will stain and you'll end up with water stains on it, unfortunately. It also is a very hearty and thick leather. Leather, It's very durable and hard wearing, but that biggest downfall is the water stains. Next question is, I was offered a Constance 18 in box calf. I heard that it scratches easily and can be damaged easily by rain. What is your opinion? I love box calf. I love, love, love box calf. It is so beautiful. It is a heritage leather from Hermes. It was one of the very first leathers that they used to create handbags next to Berenia. If anything, I actually think that box calf came first when it comes to actual handbags. And then they started to introduce Berenia in the handbags because Berenia was first used for their saddle bags, if I'm not mistaken, like for, you know, the saddle uh, equestrian equipment bags. So box calf is absolutely stunning. So, so beautiful. Yes, it does scratch, but um, the scratches will show early in the early life of box calf because it hasn't started to develop its patina yet. And patina is when the natural oils from your hands get absorbed into this leather because it is an unfinished leather. So natural oils, any kind of oil exposure, that kind of thing soaks into the leather and it gets a beautiful glimmering shine, like a nice glossy shine to it. And that's when the scratches will start to disappear and blend into the leather and you won't see them anymore. But until that happens, yes, it will scratch easily. Yes, it will show in the leather. You have to wait until the patina comes in until it really starts to blend in. Yes, it can get damaged by rain, but only if you let the rain sit on the bag. So any kind of water if you let it sit on the bag for too long it will blister but if you get some light drizzle just some light droplets a little bit of a sprinkle but you dry your bag say you know like I wouldn't say immediately but still fairly quickly then it shouldn't blister at all the problem is if the water is sitting on the surface and is allowed to penetrate through the leather surface and that's when you'll get your blistering and that's the same for any bag you can get blistering on any leather, even the finished leathers like Togo, Epsom, Clemence, and Swift, you can get blistering on those if the water is left to sit there. And especially if you're caught in a real downpour where you've got a lot of um, the pressure from the rain, the heavy rain, 
pushing onto the actual leather and that will cause blisters. So that's why downpours are really bad for any handbag that you have. If you are caught in a downpour, you really want to protect your bag. Put it underneath your shirt, underneath your coat, get a plastic bag, anything you can do to really protect your bag. Have you ever considered a Gypsy Air in 28 or 31 size? The Gypsy Air bag by Hermes, I am not a fan of it to be completely and totally honest. I don't love it. It is not my kind of style. In terms of a crossbody bag, I think it's quite nice. I think it's quite elevated. So say like we compare the Gypsy Air to the Evelyn. I think that the Gypsy Air is the more sophisticated, classy, nicer looking crossbody bag versus the Evelyn. Evelyn is much more casual, carefree. Gypsy Air is casual, but it just looks more elevated, more classy, more expensive. You know, it just looks it looks like an overall better bag. But as for the actual bag itself, the Gypsy Air, it is not my style. It's not something I ever foresee adding to my collection. But I do think that if you like crossbody bags and you like casual messenger sort of bags, I do think it's a really, really nice bag if that is your sort of style. I have the very, very last question was, I was recently offered my first dream bag. I was wondering if you ever gave your sales associate a gift to show gratitude. I was thinking to give a gift card to a nice restaurant. Um, now, firstly, have I ever given my sales associate a gift to show gratitude? Yes, I have. But the rule is, is that if you do give a gift, it has to be something that they can actually share amongst others. So if you do give a gift, it has to be like chocolates. That's what I've given before, a box of chocolates. Um, yeah, because that way they can share it amongst others. So it has to be something that they can share amongst others. It could be like a box of Krispy Kreme donuts, you know, whatever. A box of macaroons, as long as they can share it amongst the other uh, colleagues that they have. Because if you're giving them a personalized gift, like a gift card just for that sales associate, or like an item that's specifically just something that for them and they can't share it, then that could be considered kind of like bribery. Um, and that's definitely frowned upon. So those sales associates are not, they're not allowed to accept it. They're actually not allowed to accept those kind of personalized gifts. If they are actually given anything that's personalized, what will happen is that it actually will go into like a, um, a drawer, like a lucky dip drawer and all those kind of gifts that are personalized for the for, were given to someone, say they got sent to the store and there's nothing they can do, they can't send it back. That's where they put it into a lucky dip and they do draw out like the name from a hat and whoever wins the name, whoever like name is drawn from the hat gets that gift. So you may gift it to your sales associate, but you know what? The chances are they may not end up with it. As always, if you have any more questions, put them down in the comments down below. You can also DM me on Instagram as well and I'll put all the questions together and I add them into my phone notes and then I go through them and we'll keep doing these Hermes questions and answers. For as long as I keep getting questions, we'll keep doing them. As, as long as you guys keep watching the video, then I will continue to do these Q&As. Uh, but that is it. You guys have a fantastic day or night. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.